Neil, uh, Cork Airport seems to be having a very successful year. Tell us a little more. So we're really pleased. We've grown by 10% in the first six months of the year. Um, and we're on track to have a record-breaking year in Cork Airport. We'll have 2.6 million passengers. Uh, currently, we're the fastest growing airport in Ireland, bar Great. none. Fantastic. Uh, so our growth rates are beating Dublin, they're beating the Belfast, they're beating Knock, they're beating Shannon. So it's re we're really pleased with that. And how many routes are there now in and out of the airport? It's 50, 50 wow. scheduled routes, so yeah. across nine scheduled airlines. Uh, so we've really strong European routes, very strong British routes. Uh, and we're of course disappointed with the Norwegian news in terms of the grounding their aircraft but our intention is to stay in the transatlantic market and to continue in that market so if it's not with Norwegian we'll be looking to, for another player in that market. Great yeah and you're obviously always out there if you like talking to airlines looking for new routes offering them incentives packages selling sort of the wild Atlantic way in Ireland's each, ancient east to them. Absolutely we have three people in our B2B marketing team it's headed by Brian Gallagher he's very experienced we run the Roots B2B Marketing Award in 2018. Uh, so we pitch to maybe 15, 20 airlines a year, uh, and we have built it up from essentially three airlines number of years ago to nine scheduled airlines now. And we'd like to get to maybe 12, 14 scheduled airlines over the next number of years. Great, and what's the split of, if you like, um, um Irish people travelling abroad and international people coming into, into court? So a few years ago, back in 2013, 2014, it used to be 30% of non-Irish using Cork Airport and 70% of Irish, and we weren't happy with that. So we created a strategy to work with Tourism Ireland, that we would market in the, out, in the inbound markets. So we co-market with Tourism Ireland in France, in Italy, in the, in the UK, in their own language. So in French, in Italian, in, in, uh, in Spanish. Uh, to come to Ireland, to come to Cork is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So come to the Wild Atlantic Way through Cork Airport. Uh, we pay a third of the cost, the airline pays a third of the cost and Tourism Ireland pays a third of the cost. So now 40%, 44% of our passengers are non-Irish. So we've grown from 30 to 44% yeah. in five years. And that's a much better balance, isn't it? It's a much better balance. You're looking to get to 50-50. So we've gone from 30% to 44% and we're on our way to 50-50. So it shows that inbound marketing, the junction with tourism marketing, absolutely works. And that's why the budget that tourism Ireland have for marketing is very important. That that's not cut and that it's grown. Because tourism is one of those great industries in Ireland that nobody realises creates so many jobs. You know this. Absolutely. And regional tourism is a mantra of government and agencies and, and the industry. And, and I imagine Cork Airport is, is important. Like you mentioned the Wild Atlantic Way. You're also a gateway to, to Ireland's ancient east. Yeah, we're really lucky. Just to differentiate those two products, the Wild Atlantic Way is beaches and it's horses running along beaches and these far-flung pubs in remote towns. And Ireland's ancient east is 5,000 years of built heritage. So starting at Newgrange, uh, the oldest built structure in these islands, one of the oldest structures in Europe, uh, right down to uh, Bonratti Castle, Blarney Castle, so it's the built heritage. So Cork is on both of those international products and what we want is tourists will come in through Cork Airport to use both of those products. Yeah, It's not all good news of course, you mentioned Norwegian and the fact that because of the, the, the grounding of the Boeing planes, uh, Norwegians have, 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 have stopped their service into Cork and, and Shannon. Mm. Um, where does that leave you or what, what are your hopes because you worked so hard to get that transatlantic route and, and you know I, I know from talking to your retail guys downstairs that American tourists were big spenders so yeah. it must have been particularly valuable not only to the airport but to the region so there are plans afoot to, to either win Norwegian back or to, to target other uh, uh, carriers. Yeah so first of all it's important to understand what happened with Norwegian. So Norwegian have lost 18 of their aircraft. They haven't been able to replace them through the grounding of the Boeing Max. So people think it's a Cork story or Shannon story. They've stopped transatlantic services in Bergen, in Edinburgh, in Belfast, in Cork and Shannon. They've halved their services in Dublin. So they simply don't have 18 aircraft that they used to have. So there's substantially less. Uh, we got a taster for the transatlantic market. The region loved it. Uh, and we want to stay in the transatlantic market. So we're hopeful Norwegian, and Norwegian have some challenges, their own financial challenges as well. We're hopeful they might come back, but if they don't come back, we'll be talking to other airlines. We are talking to other airlines. So we've had a great route network in UK and Europe, but we want to stay as a transatlantic airport, and we intend to do that. Yeah. And where do you see Irish tourism at the moment? I mean, could the state be doing more to support the sector? You mentioned the importance of, of marketing budgets. Likewise, Fault Ireland have a product development budget and, and industry supports. And, and, and I've always said it, and I know you're a big supporter of it, it it's the biggest indigenous industry we have, tourism. It's the biggest regional employer by far. Could the state be doing more or local authorities be doing more to, to, to support us as a sector? I think Tourism Ireland is a great agency and has been recognised internationally as being a really good marketing agency and fault Ireland in terms of developing the product and the quality control. But I think tourism 
people take it for granted. They assume that it doesn't need work. And if we learned any lessons from the previous boom, is that competitiveness will price us out of the market. Yeah. And competitiveness isn't just about hotel rates or restaurant rates and so on. It's about labour costs, and minimum wage, restrictions on Airbnb, uh, reductions or increases in excess duty on car hire. So the hidden changes that have been made over the last two or three years have made us we're growing more and more uncompetitive. Yeah. We're starting to see a dip in the British inbound market. Uh, the potential is we could see a dip in the US market at some stage. So mm -hmm. we don't want to be in a situation where we're all saying, what happened to tourism? It was growing for seven years. Yeah. What did we do wrong? So the big watch for government is watch competitiveness. Insurance costs, VAT, excise duties, restrictive labor covenants, and even things like the availability of taxis. Yeah. You and I talked last night, there's starting to be a shortage of taxis in Dublin. Mm. Uh, we saw a shortage of taxis last night in Kinsale. Um, there is a potential to be transformational in Irish tourism and allow something like Uber. Mm. Uber would, of course, allow tourists to travel. Uh, it would increase the flexibility, it increased the cost efficiency. It would do huge things for rural isolation. You know, these uh, farmers absolutely. down country lanes uh, where the government is spending quite a lot of money on rural transport. Uber would transform that. Yeah. So the scope for some really creative measures uh, to increase the tourism budget and we'd be calling on government to look at some of those. Yeah, absolutely concur with that. Um, Brexit, I mean, no no conversation goes by without the, the dreaded B word. Boris Johnson looks like he's going to be in, in number 10 um, quite soon. Um, that possibly increases the chances of a hard Brexit. Is Cork Airport exposed to that? You have quite a few routes in and out in our Britain. What, what's your take or your view on, 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 on Brexit and its potential implications? I think everyone is exposed to Brexit, everyone in Ireland. We have quite a lot, of, almost half of our travel is to the UK. So although we have a huge amount of routes in continental Europe, we have like four Londons and we're up through Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, mm -hmm. Scotland, two Scotlands. Uh, so planes will keep flying is the main thing. Passengers will keep travelling. There will not be queues in immigration and airports. That's all signed off in terms of the common travel area. There's a treaty ready to go hard or soft Brexit that keeps planes flying. The, the, the impact is potentially the macroeconomic impact. Yeah. So sterling is falling, sterling will continue to fall and you're back to the competitiveness of Irish yeah. tourism. The biggest competitor for Irish tourism in the UK is Scotland and Cornwall. Mm. So when people don't choose Ireland, they go potentially UK travellers, they go to Scotland or they go to Cornwall, where they don't have to change their currency. So if their currency is falling, they're more likely to holiday at home. Yeah. So the watch for Irish tourism is don't forget the British market. In Brexit, sterling will continue to fall and we have to stay competitiveness. If we get too dear, we'll see it fall in. Absolutely, and, and if sterling weakens, it makes an Irish holiday more expensive for the British consumer, so all the more reason that we keep costs at a, at a, at a manageable level here on the ground. Absolutely, and we also keep availability of things like Airbnb, that you know, one policy to maybe promote housing has a knock-on effect to taking beds out of tourism. So we need a really strong tourism policy to just keep the industry going over the next three years. Absolutely. Um, Running an airport obviously is a, is a costly business and, and we talked off camera about some of the CapEx uh, projects you've got underway. Um, you're, you've also been shortlisted for the best European airport, um, which is absolutely fantastic for, for an airport of, of this size. Um, tell us a little bit about the, 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 the costs of running an airport or the capital costs about terminals, uh, airside facilities. Um, it, 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 you know, a, lot of, a lot of times the consumer or even the airline doesn't see it. Yeah, that's true. So first thing is we don't get any grants from the state. So we run it as a business. It's a business with a capital B. We take in revenues from airport charges, from car hire, from car parks, from food and beverage, uh, and so on and so on, advertising. Uh, and then we pay bills to pay. We pay our wages. We pay the fire service, the police service, all of the security staff, all of the operations staff, safety staff. We've, we pay 1.8 million. Cork City Council in rates, we pay two million in repairs, keeping everything repaired. So it's a very expensive business to run. You have to run it really efficiently, you have to run it 24 hours a day, 364 days a year and even on Christmas day we have helicopter traffic yeah. and a skeleton team. And all has to be funded all has to be funded by your own Commercial means. revenues and airport charges, so there's no grants, so smaller airports in Ireland get their CapEx funded either 75 or 90 percent, we have to run it as a business. It keeps us lean, it keeps us very efficient. It keeps customer focus, so there's great merit in running it properly as a hard-nosed business. Um, so we're up for the ACI award this year, and um, that's on foot of passenger feedback. So ACI demand that airports um, carry out passenger service in the same format in every airport, so the questions aren't tailored. Red Sea do it here in Cork, you met them this morning. 
they're here almost every day interviewing passengers and then thousands and thousands of those surveys are collated and fed back to ACI in terms of what they think of the Wi-Fi, the toilets, the security keys. And Cork Airport is also one of the top three airports in Europe in our size. So we're up for an award this year. To, to answer the second part of your question, it is very expensive to run airports in OPEX and in CAPEX. So this year we have five big projects. We talked about them this morning. We're replacing our IT system, which runs the whole airport. That's going to cost 800,000 euro. We're replacing all of our network switches, which run our Wi-Fi, which run our FID screens, our flight information display screens, our GID screens, 400,000 euro. Um, and there's two more projects, but the biggest project by far is every single baggage x-ray underground for what we call the whole baggage screening system has to be replaced and upgraded for the latest security threats. And that will cost between 10 and 12 million euro. That's not, not, not insignificant. Not insignificant. So we have to fund all of that ourselves. We, yeah. So we have to make, we have to, to ensure that our revenues exceed our costs. We have to finance ourselves mm -hmm. through DAA. And DAA is a great parent, a really good aviation company. And um, people think DA is just Dublin and Cork Airports. DA is in 16 locations overseas with ARI. It's in Saudi Arabia with DAA International. We have shares in Dusseldorf Airport in Germany. We have shares in an airport in Cyprus. So it's a really big international aviation company uh, whose ordinary share capital is owned by the state, but whose bonds are on the stock exchange. And it's a great Irish success story. Absolutely. Um, Going back to Cork, is there, is, are there any product gaps, do you think, within the, the Cork tourism environment? I mean, we've heard about the Cork Event Centre. That probably would be uh, a big plus for Cork in terms of being a magnet for events or for conferences and, and in turn would help, help the airport. So what's your take on the, on the Event Centre? Because I know it's mired in, in sort of controversy. And also, are there, are there other product gaps that you think might, might be filled? The, the Event Centre is a disappointment. The Event Centre was earmarked and the sod was turned, but it hasn't progressed. You know, there's a, a gap in the funding and there's a row over the funding. But I think at some stage as a region and in terms of government, we have to re-baseline. And if we need a new site, we have to go for a new site. Yeah. The danger is it will just mire itself in delay. Yeah. So there's a time where we either have to decide we are going ahead with existing plans or we rebase that and go ahead with new plans yeah. on a different site. I think that time is approaching. Uh, events it will be brilliant. It will be it will be cultural events, but it will be concerts as well. So it will be the Rod Stewart's and the Bruce Springsteen's. Yeah. A lot of it will be domestic, so it won't all be tourism. But in any one international concert, you'll have maybe 15% yeah. of people will fly yeah. in for it. Um, and those people won't just come for the concert, they'll stay three or four days. So it will pump local tourism, it will pump hotels, restaurants, pubs, uh, and it'll be a huge plus for Cork, and we as a region need to move on it fast. Yeah, great. Neil, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the show around at Cork Airport this morning. You're doing some super job down here, and we wish you very best of luck with both the award and the continued season ahead. Thank you all, and I appreciate that. Thanks, Neil.